Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how I wired in a rapid shutdown button for the EG4 6000 XP and the indoor Power Pro wall mount battery. The 18kPV has a button on it, but you can also wire in an external button like that. So if you wanted it by the door of your shop or on the outside of your shop or something like that or outside of your garage, then you can wire in an external one like this. The 6000 XP doesn't have an external button like the 18K PV does, so you would need to purchase one like that. So this video is specifically centered around shutting down the inverter and the battery. Like I mentioned, if you wanted to shut down your arrays, you, there's a couple different options for devices you could have on each individual panel like solar optimizers. And those would be hooked into here, and there's a port there for a 12 volt power supply for those. And the EG4 battery versions that work with this rapid shutdown are the LL model, so the version 2 and above, and the Power Pro model, so the indoor and outdoor versions of those batteries. And you can actually wire it into the battery communication port also if you don't have a Lux Power inverter and you still want that rapid shutdown capability for the batteries then you can wire it into the comms cable. There's a section in the manual of the batteries themselves that shows you how to wire it in that way to be able to have rapid shutdown, like I said, even if you don't have a Lux Power inverter. All right, so I'm gonna jump right into it and show you guys how I wired it up. This is the rapid shutdown button I got off of Amazon. There's a bunch of different choices on there, but I just thought it looked neat with a little lid here. But yeah, this comes with a grommet and a set of keys to lock it up. I don't know if you want to have it locked though, if you want it for emergencies. And then some screws. And then you'll put two wires in here. So the two wires that are going to run from the inverter are going to go into here. I'll show you guys in just a minute. This is the wire I'm going to use. You can just use any fine stranded wire as long as you have two in there. And this already had some little ferrules in it. I'm just going to strip this end and then hook it into the button and the other end goes into the inverter. So like I mentioned before, this can shut down your solar panels as well. And in order to do that, you have, if you have solar optimizers on each panel, then it requires a 12 volt power supply. So you can see right here, this is your 12 volt plus and minus. But since I'm just gonna be wiring it in to shut the battery down right now, I'm not gonna be using that. I'm gonna be using these two over here. And since I'm just using a random two-stranded wire, there's no specific polarity or anything. I'm just gonna put green on the, you know what, I think I'll do green on the left and white on the right. Okay, so those are in. I'm going to wire it up to the button now here in just a minute. Before I put it on the switch though, I can show you guys the, the button is essentially just going to be closing the contact between these two wires. So when you push the button, it's essentially just closing, it's connecting these two wires together. So you can just connect these two if you wanted to test it. But when we do this, it should, the battery should go into alarm and it should shut the breaker off completely when you touch these two together. So let's see. Yeah, check that out. Look at that. That is so cool. That is really neat. Actually, while I'm wiring it up, I saw they've got numbers on it. So this is 11 and 12. So if it's anything like a PV disconnect, these two probably wire together and then these two. So this actually had four different terminals on it. I think a lot of them just have two. Before I put this back in the box, I can verify my theory here. We can check continuity between the two. Yeah. So these two go together. So all wired up, but this switch is stupid. <laughs> they, I didn't realize this until afterwards, but they normally come with an option for normally closed and normally open, which means, you know, like I showed you guys before, it closes the relay when the two wires touch each other. But in this case, this switch is normally closed and there's no option for having uh, normally open on there. Meaning in order to trip the relay, you actually have to uh, turn the switch, what would be considered in the neutral position there or on uh, in order to trip it because it's the opposite of what you want. So yeah, I mean, that's sort of frustrating, but here, let me show you. So if you, so <laughs> there it goes, but that's how you would want it sitting normally. And then in order to trip the relay, you would want to go like this, but instead on is off, off is on with this switch. 
And I felt dumb after I had wired it up. It should have been obvious from the beginning when I was wiring it, but you really don't know what you don't know. And I, I mean, I like learning new stuff, but not a huge deal. The switches don't cost a lot of money and they only take a minute to wire in. If you are gonna buy one of these switches, make sure it lists both of them on there, normally closed and normally open, that it has that option. I think most do. This didn't even have it on the listing, so that should have been a sign there, I'm sure. Yeah, so really easy install. When I first heard about the rapid shutdown button, I was thinking it would shut the BMS off, uh, but the fact that it actually shuts the breaker off, the battery is dead, and I definitely think that's the way to go. I really like that. And I saw the EG4 video on rapid shutdown. They said this is going to end up being code pretty soon, and I have no doubt. So for emergency personnel or anything like that, you need one central point to be able to shut the entire system down. So I have no doubt it's going to be code pretty soon here in the US. But even if it does take a few more years to become code here, I don't think there's any reason not to do it. Assuming you have these model batteries that I mentioned before, it's really easy and it's cheap to put in. And I do have a button on my 18K PV like I mentioned, but I think I'm gonna end up putting a switch like this uh, near the walkthrough door on the outside of my shop so I can hit that in case of any emergencies. So like I said, I'll put a link in the description below to the switch that Signature Solar carries. And I'll look for another one on Amazon too, see if I can find a nicer one to uh, list for you guys. And like I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, you can wire this into the battery communication port as well. If you don't want to go through, or if you don't have one of these inverters, one of the Lux Power inverters, you're using a different brand, then you can still shut the battery down that way through the battery communication port. You're just going to have to wire it into an RS-485 cable. And leave a comment below if you guys have already installed one of the switches here for these inverters and batteries, and if you're planning on doing it. I'd like to hear from you guys either way. So I hope this video was helpful. I appreciate you guys watching, and stay tuned.